Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. I'm going to do a uh, Red Room Crypto Killers 1 Director's Commentary track, uh, going through the issue. But I want to let you guys know that it is Final Order Cutoff for issue 3 of Red Room Crypto Killers. Uh, this is the cover that Jimmy did for Red Room issue number 1. You can see that Homeboy is able to, uh, to forge documents with the best of them, doing his Rob Liefeld uh, Gilbert impersonation to a T and this is going to be Jim's effort for uh, the third issue of Red Room uh, sans the dope ass Red Room logo that he was able to make the legend logo you got that piece of art man I don't it's all digital the logo is all digital the uh I saw that piece of the um the the legend logo though oh yeah I do have that yeah let's let's, let's show some of that stuff off man so you you know the legend logo goes there the Easter Island the head. Easter Island head it would be that and then uh, Jimmy did a couple passes of this because there's going to be a backup in that issue. Yeah, it worked out so well with the backup feature to perfectly tie into the cover. Yes. And that was what I was trying to, you know, you try to make these pieces all fit right, and sometimes they do, and sometimes you have to just be creative. In this case, because you have a backup, it was like the perfect piece. And even, uh, I don't want to give anything away, but it's on the title, Yeti is in there, right. which is perfect for a monkey man uh, right. <laughs> homage. Yeah, dude. So, Jimmy, thank you so much, man, for hooking it up. And this issue uh, is the one that has my, like, Tarantino analog character in there. So your store has to order these books by uh, Monday as of the release of this video. So uh, make sure you put in your orders now so that your store knows how many to uh, order and we know how many to print. And uh, without further ado, let's hop into things, Jimmy. I guess we should also let people know about uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July. This is when we're we're going to uh, dump a whole bunch of comics onto the uh, population of the United States and elsewhere if you uh, your country has those free little ending libraries. Last Saturday in July, uh, dump dump your doubles, dump your comp copies, go buy a couple of comics and dump them into your free little, little lending library in your neighborhood. And uh, let's let's generate some new comic readership. And the way that we can do that is by introducing people and, and, and putting comics in front of people's faces who might not necessarily be looking for them and uh, we'll stumble upon them, give them a shot, and may, might become uh, lifers in the same way that you and I are. Uh, so, Jimmy, let's just jump right into things, man. Yeah, let's do that. This text piece in your beginning intro, I did homages in Aphrodisiac. I always think of the Marvel comics, the Jim Shooter era Marvel comics, where it's like, we're going to sum up the book for new readers. Start here. And uh, I think you do a really good job on that text piece as like the sum summation and uh, dive right in from there. But I remember writing some of these and being like, these are for me. Nobody's going to read this fine print. <laughs> right. And I got so many comments on it. So like reading this issue, I was like, yeah, it's good. That's good stuff. It's a good starter. It sets the tone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, what does Marvel do now? They'll, they'll put a whole page w that will be that. And that's kind of whack. So, you know, Jim Shooter did a couple of things quite correctly. And you do your sum up because every comic is somebody's first comic. This comic is designed to be somebody's first comic. So give them a glimpse in the, the world. And and with this like top box, like that is what all stories from Red Room hang on that. You know, so it's like, okay, let's look at some the murderers. Let's look at the victims. Let's, let's look at this one problem from a d bunch of different angles. And of course, with a splash page, you need to have some arresting imagery, right? To uh, get people on board. And with this last, like, four-issue run, I think I got some of the best, like, page ones of, that I've ever put together in a comic. It's so cool to think that way. Because, you know, we hear from so many first-time makers. And look, man, when you're making a comic for the first time, you're not juggling all those details. It's as you get down the path of being a creator and you start thinking about this stuff on, a, on kind of a micro level. Like, we say it all the time. I want to open the book and hook me. Hook me again. You know, I picked it up with your cover. Now make me buy it with that first page <laughs> right uh the character is is based large part uh, upon uh the btk killer and you can find photographs of that guy dressing himself up with like weird female halloween masks and taking pictures of himself all tied up with like a stopper a timer on his camera and stuff so we're building some of that into this but nobody knows that he's actually a red room killer that's the deal like he he has gotten caught because he kept trophies from past crimes but uh, nobody knows to the extent of uh, his transgressions. 
This episode is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Three different levels will give you access to our videos early, and at the King Kayfaber level, you'll get access to all of our videos as well as the recording session. These videos are also brought to you by the books that we make, and we've got a big year ahead. Coming up from Ed Piscor is the Hip Hop Family Tree, Omnibus, you see it on screen, Gold Foil. This is going to be the beautiful book of the season. 500 plus pages, including all of the Hip Hop Family Tree comic, plus 140 extra pages just for the Omnibus. Pre-order that one today. There's also a big collection of X-Men Grand Design, all three of the Grand Design X-Men volumes in one convenient location. That'll be out before the end of the year, perfect as a holiday gift. And the final season of Red Room, Crypto Killers. Issue one is already out. Issue two on the right here, coming very soon. An entire series, every issue self-contained. The perfect jump on spot for new readers or longtime Red Room fans. My next book is Street Angel Princess of Poverty, coming out later this year from Image Comics, The Homeless Ninja on a Skateboard. This collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, also available and back in print from Image Comics. Hulk Grand Design, Oversized Fluorescent Green Treasury Edition now available, and the first young adult graphic novel, The Plain Janes. And my latest comic book, True Crime Funnies, self-published, written and drawn by me, featuring three nonfiction short stories, available now on my website. And now back to the video. That initial image was a uh, was an iPad. So now we're seeing who the holders of the iPads are. And it's two kind of college-age girls with, with the daughter of that killer sitting right behind them. Because it's the talk of the town. It's big news. It, this is Jeffrey Dahmer. This is Ted Bundy. This is like the, the du jour, big-time serial killer talking that shit, man. That's such a wild notion, imagining this happening, like, in your town. Right. Especially if it's, you know, a smallish kind of town. One of the things that I like to do a, a lot, uh, that's it's always fun whenever it's getting copy edited, is uh, Eric Reynolds, co-publisher of uh, Fantagraphics, is the editor of this, man. And I'll get his feedback, and he'll be like, Ed, what the fuck is a FOD map? And that's like the new, that's like the new one, right? Like, they've conquered gluten and have a gluten-free section, Mark my words, man, you're going to be getting the FODMAP section, and that's just carbohydrates that make you poop too much. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is one of those issues that, you know, if you read all of Red Room, you can get a bigger picture, but I did design it to be singular. Um, in issue one of the very first Red Room comic, as part of a uh, graduation pre gift, the father, Davis, gifts um, the daughter a backpack full of uh, full of money. And there's this like little woven in piece, a little ins inspirational quote from dad that she kind of like looks at and just thinks about him. But what I'm setting up is that she's a pariah in the town. Like right. be because of like the things that the, that her dad is guilty of, she is now an unwilling like focal point of the community. Somebody on the bus recognizes her she leaves to go to work, and there are people just waiting for her to show up at work, talking about TMZ paying $500 a pop for pics of the cannibal's daughter. She makes it to work. The old man uh, at the at the coffee shop you know, locks the door, calls him jackals, calls him vultures, but he is running a business, and it is becoming a little bit too much for him to handle. He's got to let her go. And and she she takes it she takes it well. You notice I'm using that eight panel grid, right? Uh, prob uh, reading stray bullets, you know, rereading stray bullets. Sooner than later, Jimmy, I would like to do the second round of stray bullets with you. But that malleable eight panel grid, something about that rectangle on its side like that, is just really fun to compose to. And I'm working on a daily strip right now, and it's basically a half page of this uh you know it's the same setup but like instead of it being four squares like a traditional newspaper daily strip it's four rectangles like that there is just so much that you can do with that yeah it looks so good and it's so easy for anybody to read you mentioned this as being a good setup for like new reader start here even a new to comics reader can start here clarity is key man like that, that's that's always been something that that was very very important to me when it comes to making comics is just the readability of it. Because, because how many times have we covered comics on here and we talk about, I didn't know 
which caption to read next. And I remember the frustration as a kid of almost wanting to put a book down because I didn't know what to do. It just takes you out of the moment. Now, now the guy who fired her, he he doesn't have he's he doesn't have the heart of Hitler, man. He, he at least got her an Uber, so she doesn't have to hop on the bus again and deal with you know a bunch of a bunch more nonsense. Plus the people outside who are taking pictures. But when she gets home, you get the sense that she's used to it in a way. Like there, there's just, this is her life now. The news cameras are out there until the next big newsworthy piece of bullshit happens. But beyond the news cameras, man, you see this shifty figure right here. Uh, if you have read the rest of Red Room, or you just go to this page. Dominic DeSimone, he's a, he's a lawyer. I sort of based him on that... Uh, Pharma bro, Martin Scarelli, you remember that ca character, that upturned nose? Whenever I was first putting this comic together, I had this idea of like a shifty lawyer being a part of this game. Cause, cause like in my mind, it, this is a red room to participate in red room activity to be in the streams is luxury items. You know, it's, it's people who have Bugattis get to do that. And, and that guy, you know, increasing the cost of his pharmaceuticals and stuff, you know, for 4,000 4, X, he could afford it. Yeah, he's trying to find the the money, basically. Yes. Like, where did this big account, where is it? And whenever he kind of gives up satisfied that it's just he's not going to get it, gets rid of uh, any chance that he might spill the beans on the Red Rooms, and that is so nasty. <laughs> yeah, it's a squash and stretch, dude. That's so disgusting looking. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of taps them with a little bit of stuff. Whenever I was uh, doing research and stuff for, for Red Room. One of the uh, guys that I would revisit is uh, Richard Kuklinski, the ice the Iceman killer. And uh, he did two specials on HBO uh, where they just sit down. It's almost like the Errol Morris treatment. Just sit, sit him down and, and start him talking. And there was one murder he talks about where he went to like a discotheque and he had to dress up like a big flamboyant gay guy. You know, it was like, like you know, some gay club. And he dressed up super big flamboyant because, which is, funny to think of with him because he's such a machismo you know like his job was like running porn rings and stuff and he's like and i bumped into him with a needle and the guy behind the camera is like well what was in that needle and he's like for that guy a heart attack now most of the stuff that guy kuklinski he got found guilty of like a couple of murders and I watch this uh, YouTube channel with these behavioral experts mm -hmm. and these body language guys. They think all of that stuff is all bullshit. Almost every word that he's saying in that stuff is just bloviation, just making himself look cool in the prison for like survival or money. Maybe maybe some Luke got put into a commentary for him or something. But that is a, something that he said. That's such a pro wrestling character. Yeah, like those are his, uh, you know, his shoot interviews. Yeah, exactly. Cutting promos and just building that character, selling himself, man. And he, listen, he's going to be in there quite a while, so might might as well create some mystique. Uh, but this this lawyer guy, he is affiliated with the Red Rooms. He is in some small way connected with Mistress Pentagram. Uh, so part of killing that guy was uh, the fact that Davis, the killer was maybe going to spill some beans and talk about, you know, the extent of his other crimes and uh, the lawyers being proactive in taking him out, trying to be a good little soldier for uh, the black the floor mistress. in the lawyer's office is a really good graphic choice in panel two on that page. Thanks, man. You know, that's a... Trying to that's the clarity of the visuals. Trying to balance those those blacks, man. Yeah. That that's one of those things that Dave Lapham does, you know. And I, I was, I, I uh, bow at the altar of uh, stray bullets and Dave Lapham's cartoon acumen. Uh, the house is already in disarray when uh, it was just her and her dad, but it's even further that way at this point, and it becomes a kind of a cat and mouse game. So that was a little bit of my thinking with having this little mouse with the trap and stuff because the cat is outside watching. And there's some subtle storytelling stuff going on here. As we as we exit the house, you kind of see her silhouette in the window and it's like the double the double windows there. You push the camera out and you see the white. I uh, you know, I it's one of the few times I use white in the image for something other than just the dialogue bubble to signify the light of that living room. And then you see another view of that house from like a worm's eye point of view, maybe even the car perspective. Right. Uh, those lights are out in the living room where she just was, but the lights are up in presumably 
her bedroom, mm-hmm. but then they go out, car outside, and it's kind of like, you know, a British, like an Aston Martin type looking car. I forget what I use for the reference there, but a little punch buggy shows up with the classic cartoony, you That's know. funny. Uh, a ba- bandage on it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sin City homage on it. <laughs> This is pretty good stuff, I think, storytelling wise showing that clutter because i always say like when i finish a book that's what my studio looks like and it's a reflection of what the inside of my head is and then i have to clean up right just kind of get like order restored (laughs) right but if you're like i feel like your environment is an external manifestation of what's going on in your part of the character part of the character for sure and in the very first issue of red room the mother figure dies and then you see their house is like that and you're left wondering Is the house in disarray because the mom kept it in order, or are all of you guys just foul as hell? But uh, we have Dominic watching her again, and this time there's no media outside or anything. But Brianna's best friend shows up in the middle of the night, comes running in with a bombshell. I think your dad was a Red Room killer. And Brianna's like, what are you talking about? So for several, for the whole next page, uh, Brianna is kind of like in a kind of state of denial. What is interesting, though, is the last time you saw these characters, they were almost stalking her father. So she knows that something is up for sure. I love the variety of panel border on this page. This piece right here, people don't. It's another one of those things, man. Whenever you're starting out, you're not thinking of all the elements that you have in your control, right? But whenever you're trying to make an interesting page lo- layout, and you've done this for years, that's one more element that you get to play with. This piece here make, makes me want to do more uh, pages with no panel borders, like whole pages. Oh yeah, I did some of that in some of the Street Angel stuff, especially when I would do like a grid and then break the grid. Yeah. Um, it's a fun way to do storytelling, and it's out there. There are other comics that do it. You can see it in shoujo mangas and stuff. Like, it's all over the place, but it's different. You right. don't see it a lot in, like, the DC Marvel house styles. This is almost a wordless sequence. You know, it's, it's so much visual storytelling from panel to panel, and, and it's it's the, the kind of stuff that I like most about comics, like like making comics. We got our lawyer guy. He gets out of his car, and it has those, like, gall wing doors, whatever that car is. You see the... You see the screwdriver in hand, and if you didn't see it there, you definitely see it there. He's almost willing to get like a like a weapon, kind of bust a latch open. I always feel like lawyers probably know so much nefarious tricks to do things. Some of them, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Certainly, it was blood in the mouth. Like defense attorneys definitely do. He pops into the house, and the disorder is like, where do I even begin looking for this? And what he's looking for is a Bitcoin paper wallet. Uh, This is what people will do to back up their Bitcoin wallets. Like you buy some Bitcoin, you take it off the exchange, and now you have it just digitally in your own possession. And that's something that you you, you can back up. You password protect it. But like if you fuck up, it basically generates a QR code that you sort of snap the pick of and it'll rebuild the wallet for you. So he's trying to find that in her house, man, so that he could kind of steal that Bitcoin. As he's going through her stuff, uh, tries on brassiers. Like he's, he's just kind of, he's a, he's a goofball. Uh, that, that piece was inspired by, there was a, uh, serial killer in Canada who was part of the Canadian military. And when he started out, he would just stalk and he would go into people's houses and put on like little girls underwear and bras and take pictures of himself. Like, Mm. like there were pictures of him. He's a a brawny. He was like a captain, you know, he's an officer. I think he flew the queen of England to Canada. And so he's got the square jaw and he's got the jar head and the muscles. And he's like wearing that kind of stuff. Whenever he got caught and in trouble, like the rest of the military, they, they burnt all of his military, his outfit and all that stuff. Used rubbers, toothbrushes under the bed. So now we're we're at uh, Brianna's friend's house and finally seeing what the hoopla is about. And this chick, she she you know downloads Red Room. She she is involved in criminal action, but she's showing uh, Brianna this one specific video where one of the Red Room victims kind of yanks off uh, the the sleeve off of uh, this character, the decimator and sees the exact same heart tattoo 
that we established on our guy on that panel and we establish it yeah you know in the splash page so brianna looks at it and is just like give me a break there's that's flash art you know there's a million of those tattoos out there cut back it's another page of good storytelling again practically wordless where you're just seeing the actions very clearly yeah um even the actions whenever things get complex and other people enter the fray of like oh somebody's caught me or could catch me right got to cut this short yeah man it's all it all builds into the next panel so he's looking at the picture of her there's the incinerator outside sees the incinerator looks in the incinerator looks into the uh the laundry room in the very first issue of red room both of these elements are in there yes uh you know it's one of those things man where like you know you draw stuff that manifests in real life when i was drawing this page the siding blew off my house I was going to say, it's really good for that rundown look. <laughs> I mean, you know, you see that. You see that. Totally. At least around here, I see that a lot. So it, you nail it. Also with a couple of the shingles missing. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, see the light on with the dirt of the yard. The girl is now in her room. And, and, and he's like, oh, shit, I, I better split. Uh, the U-Haul is established in previous issues. This is another one of those things. You don't need to read all of Red Room. They're all singular stories. But the U-Haul truck has been established in more than one issue, that it is a tool of the the pentagram business when it comes to hauling Red Room killers uh, to and fro, dropping them off. Product placement. Yeah, totally. I'm sure you all would be very uh, happy. <laughs> TMZ also, right? So we cut, man. We're leaving that scene that night. Uh, you see a bunch of random women... You see a newspaper headline. This uh, this headline and the structure of it is exactly a, um, a Jeffrey Dahmer front page from probably his local newspaper or New York Times or something like that. All of it. Like the, the cannibal part, face a madman. I probably kayfabe the number like for, for myself, but there would have probably have been just a portrait of Jeffrey Dahmer that we all know and recognize. And of course, I just drew my own piece. So we're mixing his story up with a, with a bunch, kind of like I did with WYSIWYG, you know, like just take a bunch of hackers, put them together, take a bunch of serial killer sickos and put them together into, into my guy, uh, further establishing more of his, his pathology, uh, but then showing imagery of, uh, that he was just a family guy whenever that BTK guy came out, man. And, and, you know, had a wife and a daughter, a lot of people were in that space of like, how did you chicks not fucking know? The uh, the daughter recently wrote a book and and and, and uh, she stopped doing press because that was like all the questions you know it's like now you're profiting off of this like where she's a little kid at the time but like a lot of weird moral stuff involved there uh, and of course it has to be on the tube while she's in the lawyer's office and starts to get glares and stares. The collection of people in the uh, in the law office, a lot of fun. Yeah, right there, man. You got your like ambulance chaser chick. Like you just know this lady doesn't need that that much of a damn brace. Dude, the greatest the greatest collar always will be Vince McMahon going to the steroid trial. Absolutely, that's the greatest use of a neck collar in the history of trials. Absolutely, <laughs> that guy. What a carny. So the Dominic Nisimo name was was established earlier. Now we officially have both of those characters in the same room at the same time. And uh, he's representing her dad. He's representing the estate. Uh, when you are in a prison facility, you are, you know, a ward of the state. You are a, a, their property uh, and your health is their responsibility. And they didn't make good on that responsibility. So he, in ambulance chaser fashion, is like, you know, we could sue. You know, he's, he's trying to make money more ways than one. And he's telling her, you know, you got a, you got a $2 million case here. All you got to do is press those charges and we'll take care of that. But she just like wants none of it, man. It's already, already been established that there's so much damn press. She is not happy about that press. She just wants it all to go away. How about his professionalism drinking right in front of her too, man? Yeah. Yeah, I thought that one might have been for her, but uh, not the case. <laughs> so she... Killed- I like to imagine Bruce Wayne... Like, that's not really uh, alcohol. That's this psychopathic right. lawyer that's trying to present himself as empathetic to this this young woman. Right. 
whenever I draw dudes at desks, like I I draw the desks too high too mm. often. You know, it's always like little boys at the it's desk. It's very hard to draw people sit in, sitting at a desk or a table, like a, everybody having dinner. It's just weird. Yeah. So she leaves with the ashes, and, you know, it's very skewed in the text, but there is a saying on that, that urn. Uh, you don't quite see it on that page, but she's sitting there on the bus, going home, and you do see a better view of what is the little quote that's on top of that urn. That's some heavy lifting for, a, I'm going to say a wordless page, All right? but a, but a page where like the words are a part of the art rather than uh, dialogue or exposition. Yeah. Yeah. This could be lost on somebody, man. But like, uh, if you're paying attention, um, you know, all, all this stuff was there established and it's a dog whistle, man, to, to point her toward that little piece that was, uh, sewn into her, into her backpack. And as she, upon further inspection, you see I use the duotone here almost exclusively to kind of show that there's a little something rolled up in there. And if you take a look even on the earliest pages, like yeah. there's the slightest little piece of it. You could see it. It's there. That's good stuff. So she, she uh, kind of undoes the binding, pulls it out, and it just looks at it perplexed. What is this? All right, so this is fascinating to me from a formal st standpoint because now we've shifted away from our eight-panel grids. Right. Something major has changed. Right, totally. It's really cool to use some of the formal elements of comics in that way. Yeah. So she's looking at this stuff and just, like, getting constant surprises from the father. You know, it wasn't enough that he gets arrested being a cannibal, but now he's got these, like, weird photos that are out there and just keeps learning, learning more and more. Uh, this is something that I've been getting uh, a lot of DMs on Instagram because the QR code goes to my Instagram. Uh, so people would scan the QR code, go to my Instagram and be like, Smart. oh, and, and they'll, te they'll DM me like, Brilliant. oh, man, that was funny. Like, I just read Crypto Killers 1. Yeah, that's that's really smart. It worked because it's actually skewed, you know, like mm -hmm. like it goes to show the, the, the latitude that these QR codes have to, to fool around with them and mess with them. It's an instant regret on my part for uh, self-publishing True Crime Funnies without that. Mm. Um, I won't I won't publish another comic that doesn't have the, a QR code like that. Yeah, it's more... And we should do more of that stuff with Cartoonist Kayfabe. Yeah. But it's a brilliant thing to do it within the, the story. That's pretty... That's good stuff. Yeah. So uh, she just rebuilt a, uh, a Bitcoin wallet for Pious Christian 666 contradiction of terms if there ever was one and uh she's she's now a hundred millionaire you know she almost has 300 million dollars worth of bitcoin and her bit in this section just ends with her looking over at that urn saying who the fuck were you never the end but close enough uh we cut to an epilogue which is still the same it's this is still the same comic and this is the same girl but she has glasses she, different kinds of glasses she's dyed her hair almost in an effort she lives in a different place almost in an effort to uh obfuscate her her likeness a little bit to uh to the to the public you know to the media i like to think that that's street angel yeah I like seeing Street Angel float through stuff like that. I know an illustrator I'm friends with. He would put Street Angel in the background of one of his illustrations and then send it to me. Yeah, it's fun, man. So there's n different news items out in the ether that captures the media's attention. So she's being left alone, but she's not being left alone by that goddamn pesky lawyer. Yeah, he knows there's enough money out there to make it worth his while to bend some, some rules and maybe uh, break the law a little bit. Hops out of the whip sees which mailbox is hers, makes his way up to her apartment door, and hits it with the uh, little lockpick set, man, try to, try to get into her joint. Uh, gets disturbed. Somebody comes up to him, and he's got to play it off. You know, tries to be convincing. See, my, my niece locked herself out, and boom, gets hit with one of those, like, uh, little darts that you used to put in your BB gun when you were a kid. Blacks the hell out. Wakes up in the most precarious of positions if you're in a Red Room comic. He's now property of the uh, of the Pentagram facilities. And he knows who these people are. He is a patron of their of their work. 
and he knows he did wrong. Uh, it's been long established that Mistress Pentagram and the crew, they are, they are nothing if not very careful. And they don't want no dumb surprises. So, like, the fact that he's doing anything criminal where this girl is concerned could arouse scrutiny. And they just can't have it. So they've been watching him. They take care of him. And because he didn't follow the rules, well, they're going to have to... They're going to have to do something about that. There's a part of it where I, I want you as a... I want you as a uh, reader to just assume that uh, that he's toast, you know? You're now in the clutches of of uh, the Red Rumors. But uh, how about we just leave it at that? Sounds good to me. How about we just leave it at that, man? You Fantastic issue for a lot of reasons uh, in there, Ed. Let's go, let's check out some. I of that really board like gallery. some of the formal choices that you make playing, you know, playing through that story. Um, that eight-panel grid, Lapham really, really popularized that. I think with our generation, totally. Like, what a tool that is. The the Gore Gallery is something pretty exceptional, man. Because we got we got all manner of support from uh, the readership, man. We got straight up cosplay. That's a heck of a knife. Uh, this is cool. Yeah, that's all the the candy on her arms, you know. Cause, oh yeah, gotcha. Cause, cause when I um, when I designed those characters, like the girl has all kinds of raver shit on her arms, and and so like the girl made, you know, stuff that represents all of uh, cartoonist kayfabe's in there. It is, one of man. Those bracelets. Yeah, that's so fun. We got straight up tattoos, man. I believe this is from Kit Craig C K. The the guy, the dull pen, man. The the Kirby shirt that I'm wearing. I didn't realize that was his shirt design. That's a great shirt design. The Kirby uh, Major League Baseball logo mashup. Yeah. That's an awesome shirt. That's cool. And then lots of good art, man. Lots of good art. Mr. Pentagram seems to be the focus of this particular ish. I like this one a lot because there was a video game, uh, old PC game, where it was just carnality. You're just like destroying bodies and shit. That's what that looks like. This is a um, the, the update to like the fan art compared to, say image you know right. when we were kids that first year of image was full of fan art but pretty poorly produced or, or reproduced i should say this is a uh you know fan art 2.0 version totally man and uh dude it's dumb to make a book if you have a body of work man and not uh share the body of work so uh, i do want to let you guys know that uh, these videos are brought to you by the books that we make hip hop family tree the omnibus is coming to you in october uh it is off to the presses and uh, we're very excited about getting it out there. There's going to be 150 or so pages of extra material. This is the existing bibliography where, where uh, Hip Hop Family Tree is concerned. Uh, this is the cover to issue number two that is coming up within the next couple of weeks. And uh, the other big book that I have uh, out uh, in the near future for the holidays is going to be the X-Men Grand Design uh, trade paperback that's going to collect all of the... Uh, the Red Room comic. I mean, it's going to collect all the X-Men Grand Design comics that I did uh, for Marvel. Jimmy, tell the people what you got going on. Hulk Grand Design, the treasury size edition, fluorescent green, oversized, you can't miss it. Plain Jane's first young adult graphic novel and Street Angel Dead This Girl Alive are all currently available wherever you buy books or comics. Street Angel Princess of Poverty is my next release. It collects the rest of my Street Angel comics that are not in Dead Girl Alive, so get them both. They'll be a beautiful set on your shelf. And coming very soon, True Crime Funnies uh, may already be out by the time you see this video. If not, it'll be out within a week. This is my self-published collection of some short nonfiction stories I've done recently. You can also join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can read my latest comics and a whole lot of other stuff. And I do want to let you guys know that, that uh, Red Room Crypto Killers 3 needs to be ordered uh, by by uh, Monday as of this recording, man. So so uh, get your orders in quick. Get Jimmy's cover. Get my cover. Jimafu did a fr pretty fresh cover. And Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July is going to be the last Saturday in July. So please uh, go to your little free lend lending library in your neighborhood or adjacent town or whatever and dump a bunch of your comics into uh, those those lending libraries, man, and uh, help generate new comic book readership. Jimmy, what else do we have going on? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, hats, fanny packs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Give them those marching orders and we'll be on our way. Make more comics.